Thank you, Dr. Duran, Dr. Baker, Professor Gordon, and to all of you here with us today. Welcome everyone to this event that celebrates and extends the scholarly work and accomplishments of the incredible Dr. Gordon. Dr. Gordon, we are incredibly honored to have the opportunity to reflect on your work, which spans many, many decades, and to ponder the numerous ways in which your scholarship and insights continue to inform educational research well into the 21st century. Your extraordinary work and accomplishments are well known, including your leadership of Head Start, your directorship of the Institute of Urban and Minority Education at Teachers College, and of your groundbreaking initiative with the Educational Testing Service on the Future of Assessment. But in these short remarks, let me highlight three core ideas in your vast repertoire that are particularly salient in my mind in which I believe are currently transforming our understanding of educational theory and practice. But before I mention these, let me first acknowledge that today and tomorrow, we not only have the honor of celebrating your work and achievements, but we also have the singular honor of having you within our midst. Someone who was mentored, tutored, counseled, and directly influenced by the extraordinary Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois. Your account in your interviews and writings, how during the 50s, when you were about 30, 30 years old, you would, have had, you would have regular suppers with Dr. Du Bois, how you would walk and talk in the local parks, and how his thinking would inspire your own thoughts and ideas. You have mentioned how you had the rare privilege to become his younger friend friend, and he become your mentor. Some may not know that as a gift to your mentor, friend, and to all of society, you and your wife purchased his childhood home and had it designated as a national historic site and donated it to the University of Massachusetts. It's now a memorial park at UMass honoring your friend and for all of us to enjoy. What an incredible honor and experience it must have been for you to learn from one of the greatest scholars and educational philosophers of the 20th century. What an honor for us to have you in our midst today who also carries with him in his own scholarship, the soul and psyche of Dr. Du Bois. Let me now turn to the three key ideas in your work that are influencing current scholarship and which I believe will continue to do so into the future. First, the importance you have given to the notion of taking into account the larger contexts in all matters educational. And here you cite the influence of Dr. Du Bois. You've mentioned the unique way in which Dr. Du Bois approached issues, you recount how he always wanted to know the context in which an idea or a thing had developed, how it related to other things and ideas, and how he wanted to know the context in which we now experience that idea or thing. You say that he would emphasize we really don't know until we understand these contexts. In your work, you have most effectively shown the relevance of this core idea. Some of your best scholarship today, especially in the area of qualitative study of learning, includes assessment of learning, including the assessment of learning, is premised on this notion. Second, that education is much more than what takes place in schools. For too long, we assumed that education meant formal learning in classrooms and by teachers. Your work over the many years has shed light on the importance of learning that takes place in homes, in communities, and through personal exchanges. In contemporary educational scholarship, the magnitude of these influences on children's learning are only now are we beginning to appreciate and study. Third, and this is often not recognized when people speak of your work, your views on the very purpose of education. 
you have said that the best gifts that have been bestowed upon us is the gift of the human mind. For it is the, through the human mind that you say, quote, we have the capacity to deal with phenomena that have never existed before. You've drawn parallels with this capacity to what you beautifully refer to as pedagogical imagination, an imagination that seeks to go beyond the mere existence. All of this suggests the very goal of education and the one that Dr. Du Bois also advocated. You have said that Dr. Du Bois saw education as the process by which human beings cultivate intelligence and intellective competence in other human beings. You have succinctly captured this thought when you write, quote, as a Kate, education is as much about teaching and learning of how to think and the disposition to do so as it is about teaching and learning of the mastery, knowledge, and skills. This is indeed a noble goal of education, befitting the gift of the mind that has been granted to us all. In these sessions to follow, we look forward to further exploring these ideas and many other ideas from your scholarship and service. Let me once again thank you for your presence. Let me also thank the esteemed presenters and guests who will dig deep into your work and its contributions to 21st century educational scholarship. We are most grateful and very much honored. Thank you.